Alright, today we're talking about chapter 1, section 5, quadratic equations. Uh, get very comfortable because this is going to be a very long section. Alright, so quadratic equations. We've seen, heard, worked with quadratic equations for quite a while now, I, I hope anyways. Uh, you, you've definitely seen them a lot in, um, in high school. All right, so what is a quadratic equation? A quadratic equation uh, in x, all right, and then I guess in this particular case, it's de dependent on the variable, and of course our variable that we use uh, almost 99% of the time, if not 99.99% of the time, is x. So if we have an equation with x as our, our variable, uh, it can be written in standard form. Okay, this is what this is called. It's called standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Okay, now that's where the equation uh, part comes in. Uh, equation equal to, so we're equal to zero. Where a, b, and c are real numbers and a is not equal to zero. And that makes sense because, well, if a was equal to zero, well, then we, then we, this would not even exist and we, we would just have bx plus c is equal to zero, which is a linear equation. So a quadratic equation in x is also called a second degree polynomial. And Whenever we get to factoring, we have a brief review. It says uh, if, if, if you if my um, my factoring in, in this section isn't isn't good enough for you, check out uh, P5 objectives one and three. But hopefully, I'll be very thorough with my with my uh, factoring here. All right, and uh, a big a big part of how we can solve quadratic equations is through the zero product principle. Put that over here and put this here. Okay. Now zero product principle, it states that uh, the product of two algebraic expression, if the product of two algebraic expressions is zero, then at least one of the factors is equal to zero. So if we have a times b is equal to zero, then we know that either a is zero or b is zero. And that makes sense, right? If we have, you know, well, I guess I can't really use numbers here, but if I have some number a and some number b, and I know they're equal to zero, well, since I know uh, something times zero is zero, then one of those or both are equal to zero. And we use the zero product principle like that, right? Now, the zero product principle can be extended out to, you know, a, b, c, d, e, f, you know, if, if all those are equal to zero, then at least one or all those are equal to zero, and we'll see an example of that later. But that's just basically a zero product principle. And again, this is something that you've seen before. So let, let's say that you know, we, we have factored a quadratic equation into the factors x minus five and x minus two. Okay, well, if you look at this, pen here, all right, this isn't, this isn't you know, four terms, this is, this is the a term here, the a term, and this is the b term. It's not a good B, but hopefully you, you, you yeah, I can't make it. It's, it's too small. But hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Uh, a is this this first term, and B is this second term. And then I set each one of those equal to zero. And of course, that's just something you can you know do uh, arithmetically in your head. You know, x minus five, we know that's x equals five. X minus two, is, and we know that's x equals two. All right, so um, I'm going to I'm going to put I'm going to put this on the screen, uh, but I'm not necessarily going to go over it because uh, there I don't know, I I feel like and again uh, if if you read my bio uh, you know math, math believe it or not was was not my 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 strongest point either, and the thing is uh, I feel like I have have a, have a common brain here and. Uh, memorizing more things, I don't know. It it just it it's it, it wasn't. It's not good for 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 the brain, right? Um, I mean, it is good for the brain, but it's not good for for cramming and, and taking college courses. Uh, instead of, instead of memorizing, you know, these five steps, how about let's just let's just work it out and and then talk about it. Okay. Now, if you if you like the five steps, no big deal. But we'll just proceed with how how I would do these problems. 
Alrighty, so example one we need to solve by factoring. Okay, so factoring, that's, that's not going to be too hard. The, the, this is a pretty easy factoring problem. Alright, so the first thing you need to do, realistically, in, in any problem is to factor, because if you factor, it makes the, the problem super simple. So looking at A, alright, we have 4x squared, and yeah, I guess I'll just go ahead and write it. I was going to just write it in factored form, but maybe not. 4x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. Okay. Alrighty. So what do these two uh, terms have in common? Well, it looks like I can pull out a 2 and an x, right? So I, I can pull out a 2 and an x. So I can pull out a 2 and an x. And then what does that leave me with? Well, that leaves me with a 2x here. And if I pull out a 2x out of a 2x, well, that just leaves me with 1. Like that. Okay. All right, well, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, if, if that's what I factored out, uh, again, notice I have two terms here, right? This is one term. And I know I know you might you might think this is two terms, right? But, I mean, and it, I guess it kind of is, but it, it's in parentheses. So, so it's its own term, right? So we have our a times b is equal to 0. So we can, we can set each one of those terms uh, equal to 0 and uh, get our solution. So one of the terms is 2x is equal to 0. So 2x is equal to 0. And the other one was 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Solve both those for 0. Well, this, or, I'm sorry, solve both those for x. Well, this one's pretty easy. It's x is equal to 0. That's one solution. And over here on this side, if we add 1 divide by 2, we have x is equal to 1 half. Okay. And those are my solutions to uh, A. So let's start on B. So B, uh, we need to, in order to do the zero product principle, we need to be able to have a zero on one side. In this particular case, we don't have a zero on one side, right? So that's what we need to, we, we need to put a zero there. So I'm going to go ahead and write this by subtracting four from both sides. So we've got two x squared plus seven x uh, minus four. And that's equal to zero. Okay. Now looking at this right off the bat, um, I, I I feel like I, I could factor this in my head pretty easily. Uh, but uh, I've been doing this quite a long time. And uh, if you remember my my previous video, I talked about the AC method. Okay. So we're going to do the AC method for this. Okay. So uh, instead instead of guessing and checking. Uh, that like the textbook you know kind of suggested in the previous section we're, we're going to give a precise answer all right so what we're going to do is we're going to look at we're going to look at the a value and the c value okay it's a 2 times a negative 4 all right so i'm going to i'm going to do 2 times a negative 4 okay that is equal to a negative 8 okay but for the sake of, of getting the factors, I'm just going to use the positive part. All right, and and I, I'm not entirely sure if I explained why in the previous video, so I'll go ahead and explain it now. Um, if I used if, if I did negative eight and, and got factors of it, right? Uh, that is technically where I'm trying to get to to get to the seven. But factors of negative eight, um, instead of saying one times eight, well, I would say one times negative. Or I'm sorry, negative one times eight and one times negative eight. And you can see how that would fill up a, a sheet really quickly. So, so I just really ma mainly deal with the positive component of it. Now there are moments where, um, very rare moments where that does get hairy, but you'll, um, when, whenever we do see that, you'll, you'll, you'll know that you need to make just a minor tweak. And I'll show what that is later uh, whenever we get there. But uh, we've got one times eight, two times four. And again, j just to kind of keep my ideas or, and, and my brain in a row, I just start at one and just go down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? 
Uh, so one times eight times four, and then there's no three times, and then four times uh, it, that just repeats the two times four, right? So four times uh, two is the same thing as two times four. So these are my factors, right? And the, the whole point of doing the uh, AC method is to figure out which one of these two factors that when you add or subtract them together will give you a positive seven. Okay, well, um, we'll start with one that, that's impossible to work with. Uh, the two and the four, there is no possible way you, you, you could ever add or subtract them together, together to get to seven. However, one and eight, right? Well, a negative one and a positive eight will get you a positive seven. So that's what we're gonna use. And let's put a star beside it to really denote that we're using that one. Alrighty, so then we're going to rewrite our equation. So we're going to have a, we're just going to write the first part the same, 2x squared. And then we're going to write uh, plus x, right, plus 1x. That's the same thing as 1x, is saying x. And then, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, that's not plus, sorry, minus x, minus x. And then plus 8x. Now, really quickly, um, again, do, do you see how negative x and 8, that's the same thing as saying plus 7x, right? But the whole point of this is so I can factor by grouping and make this a lot simple, a lot more simple, right? And then minus 4 is equal to 0. And then we just do the factor by grouping. We're going to split this down the middle. And then we're going to factor the left side. Okay, so the left side, what does it factor into? Well, it looks like I can, fa I can factor an x out of the left side. And what, what's left? Well, let's have a 2x minus 1. What can I factor out of the right side? Well, it looks like I can factor out a, uh, a positive 4. So I'm going to factor out a positive 4. And what remains? It looks like a 2x minus 1. Now, again, uh, if you did this correctly, what you have in the parentheses will be the exact same. And, of course, they are indeed the exact same. Okay. And then we can uh, factor out our, our parentheses here. So we factor out the parentheses. We have a 2x minus 1. And then what remains is an x plus 4 is equal to 0. And if we set each one of those equal to 0, well, if we set this equal to 0, it would be 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Or we have x is equal to a 1 half. And then if we set this equal to 0, x minus 4 is equal to 0. We subtract 4 from both sides. We have x is equal to a negative 4. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, 13 minutes in, we have one example down. Today's going to be so long. Definitely one of those moments where I suggest you kind of put the speed to 1.25 or maybe 1.5. All right, so next up we have the square root property. All right, the square root property um, isn't isn't anything mind blowing. Uh, it, it it is what you think it is. Uh, you 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 basically just take the square roots of both sides. Okay, so uh, if we were to look down here at the the square root property. If u is an algebraic expression and d is a non-zero number, then u squared is equal to d has exactly two solutions, right? Those solutions are um, a positive square root of d and a negative square root of d. Equivalently, u squared is equal to d, then we can write it as plus or minus, that little symbol here, it's a plus and a minus right there, is equal to d. Instead of writing them both out, we just write a plus minus like that, okay? And that, that's that's really it for for the square root property is is well you you, you take the square root to the square root of both sides now actually before before I do begin uh, let's hmm, let's go back real quick alrighty so whenever we solve problems we know that if we have a subtraction on one side then we then we add to get rid of it. If we have a multiplication on one side, then we divide to get rid of it, right? We basically do the 
opposite operations. The uh, multiplication and division, they're opposite operations. Addition and subtraction are opposite operations. Well, squares and square roots are also opposite operations. Let's see what I mean by that here in a moment. Alrighty, so a, 3x squared minus 15. Okay, so it looks like right away I, I can factor out pretty easily. It looks like I can factor out a 3. So I'm going to go ahead and factor a 3 out. And what remains looks like it's going to be an x squared. Let's fix that. x squared minus 5. That's equal to 0. Alrighty. Now if I set these equal to 0, right, that both these terms have set up 3 equals 0 and x squared minus 5 equals 0. Well, 3 equals 0, that doesn't make any sense, right? So we can just kind of throw that out. Does, that, that doesn't matter. We don't, we, don't, we don't care about that. All right, now the thing we do care about is obviously this, x squared minus 5. So uh, if I were to write this, you know, and equate it to 0, well, I mean, it would look like you think it would, x squared minus 5 is equal to 0. We add 5 to both sides. Right. And then in order to solve for x, we have to, uh, since it's a square, then we must square root both sides. I'm sorry, I just want to kind of make this look a little bit nicer. And by squaring, uh, taking the square root of both sides, right, let's do this, take the square root of this side, and we take the square root of this side. And by doing that, well, if I take the square root of x squared, that's pretty easy. It just turns into a n rather than x. All right. Whereas if I take the square root of the right side, well, then remember I have to do the plus or minus square root of 5. Right. And that's it. Uh, th that's, that's basically the only, only, only thing about it is you put a plus or minus. Now real quick, let, let's, um, let's, let's explain why. Okay. So, and, and let's, let's use an actual good whole number here. All right. Let's say, let's say if x squared is equal to 9. Okay. Now, and I ask you, well, what is x? The first thing you're going to say was well, obviously 3, right? Because 3 squared is indeed equal to 9. But also, would you not say that negative 3 squared is equal to 9? Right? Because when we know that negative 3 squared is the same thing as saying negative 3 times a negative 3, which again is a positive 9. Okay, so that's why we say plus or minus uh, the, when we take the square root of both sides, uh, because uh, you know, kind of, you know, f funny things happen um, whenever you uh, s square and take square root of things. Okay, so that, that, I'm glad that fit on this page. So we we might could fit all three of these here. Uh, this is I'm gonna go ahead and again oh, I can't, can I? No, 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 no. No, okay. So, um, with this particular problem, I, I, I can see that both 9 and 25, uh, they are perfect squares, okay? There, there's nothing I can factor. Again, like I said, that the factoring the problem is the very first step you're going to do. There is no factoring I can do here, okay? Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, move on to step 2, essentially, and isolate the x, solve for x. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 25 from both sides and write it like this. And let's actually we might have to we might have to put C on the next page because I don't want to cram these. Okay, so we've got 9 x squared is equal to a negative 25. Okay, so again, there there there's no there's nothing that we can factor right here. So we're just gonna jump straight to solving for x. All right, and, and to isolate the x, I'm going to have to divide both sides by a 9. So if I divide both sides by 9, I end up with x squared is equal to a negative 25 over 9. And now I can proceed with the, uh, the square root property here. Okay, So I can take the square root of both sides. And by taking the square root of x squared, I end up with, well, the square root of x squared is simply x. And if I take the square root of the right side, well, it's going to be equal to, again, plus or minus the square root of 
negative 25 over 9. Now remember, if we have the square root of a fraction, we can just take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. Okay. And lucky us, they're both perfect squares. So we can say uh, x, is, x is equal to plus or minus, well, the square root of, of 5. Uh, well, first of all, yeah, let's, 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 let's take care of the i, actually. All right, so we see that we have the negative inside the square root. So let's go ahead and put the i right here, okay? Just to just to make sure that we are accounting for it, because you know it's, it's an imaginary number, we can't take the square root of a negative number, um, and then we proceed. So we've got x is equal to plus or minus. So well, what's the square root of 25? Well, that's 5. What's the square root of 9? Well, that's 3. And don't forget your i there. Right. So that's uh, well, that's that one. And I'm pretty sure I, I think we. Uh, I think we can fit. Yeah, we, 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 we can fit um, C here. All right, so C, I'm going to go ahead and, I uh, know that. Okay, so let's, let's, let's just let's write the problem and then do the, you know, the, the yellow uh, square root like I have been doing. So we've got x minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 6. I'm going to take the square root of both sides here. And if I take the square root of the left side, well, that just becomes x minus 2. But the right side is going to become plus or minus the square root of 6. Okay. And then, of course, if I want to isolate this, um, if I want to isolate the x, well, it looks like I just need to add 2 to both sides, right? So we're going to just add 2 to both sides. We've got x is equal to, we had 2 over here, so we got 2 plus or minus the square root of 6, right? And then uh, that that c, the, the, the c problem here, uh, that's going to um, segue us into the next part of this section, and a section that you are probably going to really hate. And give me a second, I'm going to take me a little swig of coffee. Alrighty, so completing the square, um, completing the square is going to be, uh, it, we don't we don't use it that much, okay? Um, but you're gonna use it a lot when when you when you deal with circles and when you get to precalculus algebra. Alrighty, and the way you complete the square is you. Well, I kind of, well, no, okay, we'll, we'll go and do uh, example three. All right, so example three is just going to give us um, little exercises in completing the square, and then we're going to use the completing the square to, to actually um, solve problems. So whenever I complete the square, when, whenever, whenever I teach completing the square, I always have four steps, right? You can count, you can say three, whatever, but I because I say we have a zeroth step, right? The zeroth step is just basically the formula, which is b over two quantity squared. Okay, and then the first step, and again, and this is how I write it in every single one of my lectures, is I write it like this but I leave out the B because I'm substituting the B in. And then in step two, step two, I don't even put the half in there because I'm dividing by two. And then step three, I kind of leave blank because I'm doing the squaring. Now, if all, if all that uh, sounds like gibberish, uh, bear with me for, for one moment and I'll, I'll tell you what I mean, <clears throat> okay? So looking at A, uh, we have X squared plus x squared plus 8x. Okay, and if you recall, let's go back to the very beginning here. Um, a quadratic equation. The a part, right, is is the is the constant from the x squared, and the b part is the constant from the x. And of course, the c part is just well, it's just your constant, right? So I'm looking for the number that's just in front of the x, right? Because that's why we say 
we say b. Um, and of course, I forgot to write the x there, so there. All right. So uh, what is my b value? Well, my b value here is 8. And let me hang on blue, blue, red, green. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm underlining that 8 in blue. Okay, so I'm going to write the 8 right here. All right. And then I'm going to do the arithmetic on the right side. Okay, so, so the... Um, 8 divided by 2, well, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and then 4 squared, well, that is going to be 16, okay? So this tells me that I need to add 16 to make this a perfect square trinomial. What, what I mean by that is, is we need, we, we need, we need to take this equation and to be, we need to be able to factor it, okay? Uh, and and we, in order to factor it, well, we need, we need to add that 16. So um, it's kind of like, let me, see, let me go back actually, maybe, ah, never mind. Okay, so, so now we can actually factor this equation. Okay, so what does this factor into? Uh, you, 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 can, you honestly could probably do this one in your head, but keep an, uh, or keep, keep an eye out that I am color coordinating this all on purpose. Okay, I'm color coordinating this all on purpose because the, six, the step three is what you put at the end of the equation. Okay, 16. But if I want to put, write this in factored form, then you just basically take it from step two. What I mean by that is, you can just simply say x, and that is a positive four down there at step two right here. That's a positive four. You can, so you can say plus two, or I'm sorry, plus four, and then squared. So I can say with absolute certainty that this equation is the exact same as this equation. It's just the second equation is the factored form of it. Okay, if, if, if I were to foil out, if I were to foil, let me erase that. If I were to foil this, then I would get the the original, well, not the original, but, but the equation the arrow's pointing at. Okay, so let's do some more examples. And by the way, we're going to go over here. Uh, keep, we're just going to erase what, what I just wrote in the last example so I can just kind of keep this, this little algorithm alive here. Uh, by the way, algorithm, algorithm is just basically a series of steps that you do. Okay, you um, you have an algorithm to, 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 to create scrambled eggs, right? So, I mean, it's just it's a series of steps that, that, you, that you do. So, anyways, so we've got x squared uh, minus 7x. Okay, so let's go to the process. What's my b value? My b value is a negative 7. Okay, so I forgot the color I did. What did we do? We did, we did. Oh, we did in blue. That's what it was. Okay, so blue, negative 7. So we put a negative 7 right here. Okay, um, negative 7. All right, and unfortunately, well, negative 7 divided by 2 is still going to be negative 7 over 2. And real quickly, before we do proceed here, no, notice, notice the difference here. Um, this is negative 7 over 2, all right, negative 7, the negative in front of the 7. And this is the negative in front of the seven and uh, seven halves. I, I really feel like at this point in time, especially if you're going into a STEM field, uh, you start to do this because it'll make the computation so much easier not having to deal with a negative in the numerator or the, the denominator and just deal with it as a whole. All right now, if, if you, uh, you know, if, if you haven't done it and you're trained and you know, you've, that's just how you do math, you, you, you just write it like this, that that's fine for now, but I'm telling you later on, it's definitely going to be a lot easier. Anyways, um, next up we're going to square. Okay, so uh, what is the square of seven? Well, that's going to be 49. And what is the square of two? Well, that's going to be four. Okay, and since it's a negative, a negative squared is going to be positive, so it's just going to be a positive 49 over four. So I can write plus 40. 9 over 4. And then again, um, now now this is one of those cases where, you know, you might not be able to factor this one in your head that quickly, right? And then again, that's where my step 2 comes into play. So, so if I want to write this in factored form, which is going to be x, well, step 2 is a negative 7 halves, so I'm going to write minus 7 over 2, well, let's put that in white, squared. And same as a. Uh, the factored form is the same as that trinomial there. 
And then lastly, and right on cue, um, Pearson, make sure that we get our taste of fractions. So, thank you, Pearson. It's not so bad, though. Alrighty. So, writing this, we have x, okay, let's write it, x squared plus 3 fifths x. Okay. So, we see 3 fifths is my fraction. Okay, well, <laughs> it looks like we're having a little bit of a, tr a problem here, right? 3 over 5. Now, for many of you, that probably looks like a, a problem where you're just like, I am, I am in zero, zero mood to deal with a fraction over a fraction. Okay. But it's easier than you think. Of course, I'm going to say that, right? Um, now, now there, there, are, there are little mental tricks you can do to, to, to solve this and say, oh, that's three tenths. But recall that that's the same thing as writing three fifths and then put a division symbol there. And then recall that that is the same thing as saying three fifths times, and then we multiply by the reciprocal, right? If it's two over one, then it's one over two, and we get three tenths. Okay, so so don't let don't 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 let that fraction over a fraction, you know, get to you because it's not that bad, right? So it's just three tenths. Uh, what color did I do that in? Is it yellow? Okay, so three tenths. And, uh, well, what is 3 tenths squared? Well, uh, 3 squared is 9. 10 squared is 100. So, uh, we, we have the, the same, um, I won't say problem, but, but the same kind of procedure here, right? So, that step 3 goes right here. So, plus 9 over 100. And then if I write that in factored form, again, just keep keep an eye on that second step, right? It's a positive 3 tenths, so plus 3 tenths squared. Okay, and that is that is basically step one of the of, of uh, completing the square. Now, I will say you know, I, I did say that's step one, but that's 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 the hard part. <coughs> okay. Um, now let's actually solve a problem completing the square. Okay, so let's solve a problem by completing the square. So the thing is, uh, in in terms of solving quadratic equations, so far, so far in this section and in in, in this uh, I guess the, this uh, this class. Uh, the, these two, within these two lectures, we only have we've we've only developed two ways to solve equations. Okay, uh, one of those equations is factoring, and one of those equations is the square root property. Well, if you look at this particular problem, you would you would just ask yourself, okay, what are my factors of four that when I add or subtract them together will give you a negative six? And then you know your 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 answer should be, I mean my factors are four, are one and four, two and two, and in no, none of those cases will I ever get to um, uh, six or negative six. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to complete the square. And I say unfortunately uh, at least at least for for this little bit right now. Uh, of course, I've, I, you 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 know the quadratic formula, and that's the catch on. We'll talk about that later on in this section. Okay, so we've got x squared minus six x plus four. Now there, there's, there is one little thing I forgot to, to mention um, regarding completing the square, and maybe I can just go ahead and put that up. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and uh, give that its own page because it, it it is important, and, and and unfortunately I did forget to say it for for a moment, but I did remember whenever we I went to solve the problem. All right, now this is very important. Before you before you even begin the process of completing the square, <clears throat> uh, you need to make sure that th your value of a is one. All right. So if a is not one, then divide both sides by a. 
Okay, so you, we want to make sure that the value of a is one. So again, a is the leading coefficient. All right. Next up, make sure that your x's are on one side. Okay, so and, and really, really that that that's it. Just make sure your x's are on one side, your constants on the other side, and make sure that your a value is one. So what do I mean by all that? Well, first of all, uh, when I said make sure your x's are on, on, are on one side, this is this this is not it, right? Uh, I will I will have to rewrite the equation. like this okay so now you see how my X's are on one side we have X squared minus X or my 6x on one side okay so that, that that's one of the things you have to do first uh, the secondly well and of course this particular problem already has the value right here right this this is indeed a 1 right here right 1 X squared but let's say it was a 2 Okay. Well, if it was a 2, then we would have to turn it into a 1. And by doing that, we would divide this entire problem by 2, and we would end up with x squared minus 3x is equal to negative 2. Okay, but of course, we, we, we don't have that problem or that issue with this particular problem, and so we don't have to deal with it. Uh, but real quick, let me make sure. Let me see if it's um, something we'll see later. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see it in example 5, so I'm not going to harp on it too much right now. Alrighty. So, anyways, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna again we're gonna I'm gonna write my algorithm over here. All right. Again, step zero is b halves squared. Step one, I'm gonna keep the the b empty. Step two, I'm gonna keep the entire parentheses empty. And step three, I'm just gonna keep the entire thing empty. So, looking at this particular problem, what is my value of b? Well, my value of b is a negative six. Okay, so I'm going to put a negative 6 here. All right, and then let's do the arithmetic. Negative 6 divided by 2, that's going to be a negative 3. And negative 3 quantity squared is 9. Okay, so here's what I can do. Now I, I know I can add a 9 to the left side here. So we're going to say x squared minus 6x. Okay, and we're going to say plus 9 is equal to 4. Okay, now... Uh, you're, you're probably autopiloting along and listening to me here, but that should probably rub you the wrong way, right? Because you know that if you have equations, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. And this uh, and this is no different, right? I mean, th th these are rules, these are laws for a reason because we're not going to break them. So we're going to also add 9 to the right side. Now, the difference between this particular problem and the exercise we did previously was this exercise, we just try to complete the square. We weren't trying to solve an equation. Now we're trying to solve an equation. Okay. Well, uh, we know the left side. Again, you can probably do it in your head, but if if you just want to just mindlessly do this, we know that the left side factors into x. I'm gonna look down there at step two, minus three, quantity squared, and then I've got four plus nine is thirteen. Okay. Now now we have a problem that looks like. Let me erase that real quick. Now I have a problem that looks like which one of these? Uh, C, right here. All right. And of course, now we, we can solve the problem using this, the square root method. So uh, if we take the square root of both sides, um, uh, I was doing it in yellow, so I'm going to continue doing it in yellow. All right, the square root of the left side just becomes, if I take the square root of x minus 3 squared, it just becomes x minus 3. That's equal to plus or minus the square root of 13. And if I add 3 to both sides, I've got x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 13. Okay. Um, okay. One, one problem. I forgot something. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. We're good. I just forgot to write negative 4 right here. Okay. thought I had it. I don't know. Maybe I erased it. I don't know. Who, who cares? Sorry about that. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't really change the procedure. It changes It changes the answer just, just, just minorly. Uh, then it said this becomes negative 4 plus 9, and then we've got a, uh, a 5 here. So again, nothing really changes. 
Um, well, I mean, the problem changes, but the procedure doesn't change. Oh, yeah, we take square root of this, too. And then we've got x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. And it's equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. There we go. Sorry about that. It happens. Um, and that's how completing the square. That's, that's an easy completing the square. Now let's go to a harder one, right? Told you uh, example five. We actually have to do the division by by a. So let's try to get this this one right this time. We have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and and add four to the other side. Okay. So let, let's write that. 9x squared minus 6x, and then it's equal to a positive 4, okay, because I'm adding 4 to both sides. Now, uh, one, one of the two things we needed to have done is, is completed. We, we need to have x's on one side, done, right? The next one that we need to have done is we need to make sure that the, the value in front of the x squared is a 1, but it's a 9. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to divide this entire problem. Uh, I don't want to do it with that color. I'm just doing it in white. I'm going to have to divide this entire problem by 9. Okay, well, if I divide the entire problem by 9, well, 9x squared divided by 9, well, that's just going to turn to x squared. So that's good. That's what I'm wanting. Uh, minus, well, 6x over 9, well, that's just going to be 2 thirds x. So 2 over 3x, and that's equal to... 4 over 9. Okay. So now I did, I did what, I, what I was supposed to. I've got I've got a 1 in front of the x squared. I've got all the I've got my x's on one side, and I can proceed with my completing the square process. Okay. And like many of you that are probably going to be doing your homework, and you're like, oh gosh, fractions. It doesn't get any easier. I hate fractions too. All right, so here we go. Use our procedure. What's my b value? My b my b value here is a negative two thirds. So I'm gonna write negative two thirds up here. If I can write it a little bit small, let's fix that division symbol. I don't know if that did anything. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Well, negative two thirds divided by two, it's gonna be a negative two six or negative one third. If I can put it in yellow. So, all right. So, uh, th this is obviously the first time you, you've, well, maybe the first time you've you've watched my lectures. Uh, but writing small threes is a little bit hard because uh, the 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 pen doesn't take that that small movement. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. Anyways, uh, and then we got a uh, one ninth. Okay. All right, so uh, I know on the left side I can add a one ninth, so I've got x squared minus two thirds x, and then we add one ninth, so make that green just to show you where it's coming from. That's equal to. Well, this is nice. I'm glad that we keep things in, in the in the nine family here, and then plus one one ninth. Again, what I do to one side, I must do to the other. Well, the left side, I can uh, I can factor it pretty easily by looking at step two. So I've got x minus one third quantity squared, and that's equal to well four ninths and, and one ninth. That's just gonna be five ninths. Um, let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides, and I'm gonna try and fit this on this page here. So if I take the square root of both sides, end up with x minus a third, and that's equal to plus or minus the square root of five ninths. And then uh, I, if I add one third to both sides, uh, I get, um, I say, uh, on the YouTube video, you can't really see, but I got a toolbar down here in my way. I don't think you can see. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, we got x is equal to one third plus or minus, we can write um, the square root of 5 over 3. Okay. 
Okay, because again, we, we, we take the we take the square root of the top, which is just you know, the square root of five, and the square root of the bottom, which is three. All right. Whew. All right. So uh, deriving the quadratic formula. Oh, that would be a good exercise, but but today's lecture is pretty long to begin with. All right, so the quadratic formula. Uh, I said a moment ago that the uh, that that the two that the two ways that that we have right now to solve equations are to factor or the square root method, correct? Well, um, I mean, also the square root method. I hate it. It sucks. It's it, it's the worst. Okay. Uh, the way I solve quadratic equations, and hopefully the way you will also solve quadratic equations moving forward, is uh, what I do is I look at the equation. I ask myself, very quietly, can you factor this in your head in, I don't know, three to five seconds? Right? And, and if you want to, you, 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 can, you can extend that to, you know, maybe five to ten seconds until you get quicker. But thing is, you don't, wanna, you don't like to waste time. I don't like to waste time, you don't like to waste time. And if I can't factor it in my head within, you know, three to five seconds... I'm jumping straight to the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is the catch-all. And that's really it. Can you factor it in your head? No. Quadratic formula. Oh, maybe I should talk about the quadratic formula. <laughs> All right. So obviously you, you, you've heard of the quadratic formula. You know the quadratic formula. Maybe. Hopefully. All right. We know that uh, the quadratic formula is x is equal to, we have a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And that is all, every little bit of it is over 2a. Now, I do see problems where, where, where students just put the, you know, just put the, the radical over 2a. Make sure everything is over 2a. All right. So, um, yeah, that's it. And it's, 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 just, it's just a plug and chug, right? Uh, you, 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 you plug it into the equation and you chug it. Uh, I guess, I mean, there we are. chug rhymes with plug, okay? I didn't come up with it. Wait, no. Chug rhymes with plug. Well, I mean, they rhyme with each other. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, hey, here we go. So, uh, Sherman, can you factor this in your head in um, 3 to 5 seconds? Heck no. Absolutely not. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this. I'm going to um, put A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to. A is equal to 8, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to negative 1. All I did was just take the coefficients, right? 8, 2, negative 1. All right, well, uh, of course, I, I know my quadratic formula. It is, it is uh, X is equal to, we have a negative B, so negative, my B is a 2, plus or minus the square root of, and I usually go overboard on that, uh, which is B squared, so b squared minus 4 times a, which was an 8, um, times c, which is a negative 1, and it's all over 2 times a. Now notice, in each case where I plugged my value in, I put them in parentheses. This is another one of those practices that, that you should probably get familiar with, right? Um, uh, you probably already do. That might be kind of dumb to say, but you probably already do. Um, but just in case you don't, you should definitely do. Okay. So now let's actually do the arithmetic here. I think we could probably fit this over here. Okay. So negative two. That's just going to be negative two. Plus or minus the square root of. Okay. Well, two squared is four, and then um, this is eight sixteen four thirty two is a um, positive 32, right? Because it's a negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4, and the positive 4 times 8 is a uh, positive 32. So we have 4 plus 32 gets you 36, and that's nice because 36 is indeed a perfect square, and then all that is over 16. So we can continue this, and we can say, okay, so we've got negative 2 plus or minus, well, the square root of 36 is 6, all over 16, Okay, and um, at this point, I feel like it, it would be 
easier, easier as a student, uh, if maybe you, 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 um, well, no, that's not necessarily the case. Okay, never mind. Okay, but anyways, we know that this is, uh, this, this turns into basically two different equations, right? We know that one of the equations, and we're just going to write this, uh, we're going to put, put this upwards a little bit to show. One of the equations is a negative 2 plus 6 over 16. And another one is a negative 2 minus 6 over 16, right? Because we had the plus or minus there. Okay, well, if we continue this, this thought process, so negative 2 plus 6, well, that's just going to be a uh, positive 4. So we'll do this, put an equal sign there. So if we'd have 4 over 16, or in other words, 1 fourth. All right, well, negative 2 minus 6, well, that's just going to be a negative 8 over 16. Well, that's just going to be a negative 1 half. Okay. And that's it. I say that's it, but yeah, that's it. <coughs> Excuse me. So we put that little squares like this. All right, so uh, this is more of the same. Again, it's just a simple plug and chug. Um, more plug and chug. All right, now the discriminant. Okay, so the discriminant is is something that I mean, I I don't use it that much. I've uh, I don't know. I've got, I've got, I've got no comment. I, I, I don't want to say too much here. All right, but anyways, the discriminant. No, notice, look look at this page here. Okay, is a quadratic formula, and inside the radical here is b squared minus 4ac. Okay. Now, inside the radical, you have three possibilities. b squared minus 4ac, you have three possibilities uh, for an outcome for b squared minus 4ac. It can be positive, it can be negative, or it could just be zero. Okay. And of course, we, we can kind of derive some rules on our own. But, you know, we're not going to. Even though I know you could because it's that simple. All right. So if, if what's inside the radical is greater than zero, and that means that we're going to have two real solutions. Okay, that makes sense. Like no, no, uh, on the last example, um, what was inside the radical here was greater than zero. And indeed, we had two solutions, two real solutions. All right. Well, if it was a negative number, well, then we would have two imaginary solutions, right? Because imagine if that was a negative 36. Then we would have uh, i's in our, in our two solutions. And if it were zero, well, I guess zero would go second. Then we only have one solution. And again, that that just kind of makes sense because imagine if if um, what was in here was well, let's do it different color. If what was in here was a zero, right? Well, square root of zero is zero, so we wouldn't even have this over here, and we would indeed just have one solution: negative two over sixteen or uh, negative one eighth. Okay, so. Those are the rules for the discriminant. They're they're super easy, and uh, there's there's not there's not much there's not much to it. So what we're gonna do we're we're just gonna. It's it's not even wanting us to solve this problem. It's just wanting us to figure out. Okay, so I mean, do, do what? How many and what kind of solution do you have? Okay, so we're just gonna simply deal with the negative b over two a. So what is, um, lo looking at a, I'm sorry, not negative b, it'd be squared, b squared over two, uh, minus four ac. I missed that. I'm so sorry. Um, that's why I needed my coffee. Probably should drink some more. But anyways, um, my discriminant, let's, let's actually write this at the top since I've uh, kind of fumbled it a little bit, uh, minus four ac. Okay. All right, so uh, what is my B value? Well, it's a, uh, for, look, I'm looking at A. My B value is 4, so we're going to say 4, and put in the parentheses, 4 squared minus 4 times A, which is 3, times C, which is a negative 5. Okay, let's do the arithmetic here. Well, 4 squared is 16. And then we've got, we're looking here, well, we, let's just do negative 4 times negative 5. Well, that's going to be a negative times negative, so it's going to be a positive, so it's going to be a positive 20. Positive 20 uh, times 3 is 60. So we've got 16 plus 60 
and that's equal to 76. Okay, so um, then uh, we need to that's 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 what the, the discriminant is, and it reads determine the number and type of solution. Okay, well, uh, it, it's a positive number, so so we're, we're going to have two um, two real numbers as a solution, and I'm not really sure how they want us to write that. Um, two, two irrational. Okay, yeah, two irrational numbers. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm just gonna write. I'm just gonna write two. Um, put R there for two real numbers as a solution there. All right. So B. We'll do this again. So we've got a. What's my B value? It's a negative six. So negative six squared minus. 4 times a, which is a 9, uh, and c, which is a 1. Doing the arithmetic here, I've got negative 36. So uh, I'm sorry, negative 6 squared is a 36. And then we've got, um, well, the 1, really, we don't really care about that. Uh, so we've got a negative 4 times a 9, so 9, 18, 27, 36. So we've got 36 minus 36. So my discriminant is 0. And since uh, my discriminant is zero, we're going to end up with one. Oh, I messed that up. We're going to end up with one real solution. And then, of course, we know that this answer is, or for C, we're going to have two imaginary solutions, right? So let's just go ahead and do this. So we've got a negative B, so negative eight quantity squared minus four times what? Four times three A, and then C, which is seven. Okay, so we've got uh, negative 8 squared, well, that's going to be 64. And then we've got, uh, let's see if we can do this. Uh, we've got, oh, we can do this. Okay, so 4 times, negative 4 times 3 is a negative 12. And then uh, 12 times 7, right? Set 10 times 7 is 70. And then so 12 times 7 is 84. But it's a negative, so it's going to be a negative 84. So we're going to say minus 84. So we end up with a negative 20. And um, since we have a negative number, we know we're going we to have two imaginary numbers, right? So two imaginary numbers, um, and I'm going to write them as complex numbers here. All right. Now your homework is obviously going to, you know, you're going to write two imaginary solutions, but I don't want to write all that out. And and that's the discriminant. It's it's. I, I think it would be a nice little reprieve in terms of, in terms of your assignments after doing the completing the square and stuff. All right, and of course here, determine which method to use. I'm pretty sure we have a, yeah. Okay, so uh, this particular, th th this box here, this box here, it's great and no, all, it's great. Um, I'm, I'm sure maybe, maybe some of, some among you are like, you know, oh, I want to absorb every little thing, and you can, okay? But like I said, for me personally, if I cannot factor the problem within you know, three to five seconds, if I can't look at a problem and factor it in my head within three to five seconds, I'm like, you know what? It's just not worth my time. And I'm going to the quadratic formula because the quadratic formula will get you the correct answer if you do it correctly 100% of the time. Okay. Uh, anyways, that does conclude today's lecture.